Hi, this is Jim Gibson with CableSupply.com, and uh, today we're going to talk about power over Ethernet. And for some people, they may have never heard that term before, uh, but it's a great idea. It works wonderful, and uh, some people don't know how to use it. Uh, they don't know how to plan for it, but it's something that could be a real advantage to you. So let's take a look at uh, power over Ethernet, and we'll talk about what, what it means, what it stands for, and everything else. But first, I want to show you how it's actually shown. So when you see it, it's going to be a capital P, small o, capital E. Now, what is Ethernet? Well, Ethernet is your network. Okay, That's the simplest way I could possibly put it. It's that's your network. And uh, there's some devices on the network years ago you had to get special power for. It. Like an access point, uh, an AP site, you know, so those little round things sometimes are square. You put them up in the ceiling and everyone can get their Wi-Fi from that point. Well, what we used to have to do when I installed them years ago was I would have to get an electrician run the power to that portion of the ceiling. And then what we do have a special metal box because anytime you have 110 power, you got to have it has to be uh, surrounded by metal, protected metal that's grounded. So if there's a fire, it's not going to burn down the, the building and no one can get a shock. So I'll make a long story short, that would be very expensive. And uh, then what we would do is we would attach it to the ceiling. We'd put our power brick. I'm trying to think, where's a power brick around here? Here's the power brick. We'd have to get one of these power bricks and attach it to 110, and it would have a little cord like this, and that cord would go to, uh, um, you know, to the system, and then we'd have to also provide a, uh, a, a patch cord. So actually, we would cable to the area, put a little uh, RJ45 uh, single block there, and, uh, and plug it in using a uh, patch cord. And it got a little expensive for uh, the installation, and people didn't generally like it that way. So what happened was someone sat down, and who it was, great idea, uh, sat down and decided, well, what you need is we, we can provide power uh, over the patch cord and through the wire behind the wall going all the way back to the switch. And, um, and if you have a special switch or some other device that provides power to that unit, all you need to do is just run your cable and you connect it to your access point and it powers up your access point at the same time it also connects it to the switch. So let's take a look at how that actually worked. So let's get back to the screen here. And so you're going to have your uh, switch and you're going to have your PoE switch. And on that POE switch, you're going to have the RJ45s. They're going to go to a patch panel. And that patch panel, uh, you know, has little squares there, too. So you're going to connect it together. Now, the switch has a lot of squares. And you connect them together using your patch cords. And then, of course, the cabling goes out to the AP site. So the power is in the switch. Now, I, I know there's some oddball stuff out there that the, the patch panel provides the power. That's really offbeat and it's not done that way. It's not the standard. Um, it's really powered by the switch. You got to have a switch out here that powers uh, the PoE. And so what would happen is the power would go through, obviously, come out of the switch, go into the patch panel, and then, of course, through the cabling in the wall, the ceiling, or wherever else it is, and then power that uh, AP site. Now, it not only can power that AP site, it can also power a camera. So we can have, uh, you know, this little port here in the back. It's attached with cables. And let's give it some more ports here on the switch. I mean, on the uh, patch panel. Okay. And uh, that's, that can also go to a camera. And it can also power the camera. Now, there's a lot of ways to power cameras in the past. Um, some people came up with some cool ideas and all, but you can get an IP camera. It has to be an IP camera that's capable to receive power over Ethernet. So the power is going through the same cord. There's no special cords. There's no special patch cords or cabling. It has to be done. It just goes over the existing system. 
so you don't have to cable your whole building. And then, of course, then the most important and the biggest application you're going to see is you're going to see that you can power a telephone uh, with PoE. Now, why would you power a telephone? Oh, by the way, that's the old symbol for telephone, a little triangle with a half circle on top. That's the symbol they used years ago. Now they use that triangle as a symbol for an outlet and a wall. It's really cool. It's, it, it seems like the data people uh, have taken a lot from voice and um, over the years because voice was obviously long before data and so the cabling, the way cabling is done, twisted pairs, always, uh, you know, the jacks, the RJ45 was originally an AT&T uh, jack that they used for their, their telephones. But the old way, uh, the old telephones um, were completely separate from the data network. So they would go to a 66 block and then from the 66 block they would go to a piece of equipment on the wall. Now the piece of equipment on the wall um, would actually power the phone. So those old phones used RJ11s and everything else was flat silver looking cords. They were actually powered from the phone system. So you had to get power to a phone. You know, you had to get power to a phone to light up the buttons, light up the screen uh, for it to work. It's, it's, it needs power just like a computer needs power. Doesn't need as much as a computer, doesn't require that much power, but it still needs power. So this is an IP phone and we're going to do a little demonstration a little later. But if you look in the back, I need to bring it closer. If you look on the back, it has two RJ45s. It has also a place where you can put a power brick. So if I wanted to run this, I can run it over a PoE or I can run it over a power brick. You know, one of these things that comes with the phone. But you know, once you start getting those power bricks out there, uh, it just gets messy. I mean, you go into an office where there's three or four people and they have all the wires going everywhere and they're plugged into a wall. They take up power from the wall. They take up an outlet that you could use for something else. It just gets really messy. So what you use is power over Ethernet. And the power over Ethernet will power that phone. So this is the old way. It's pretty much going uh, the way of the dinosaur. They were great systems, very reliable, but very few people have uh, digital systems or analog systems anymore that, that have a, a system that hangs on the wall. Now, in some situations, they have that. But in most cases, it's going to be an IP um, telephone system. And a lot of cases, it's going to be IP using the cloud, uh, a cloud telephone system. It's really great, uh, and I really like it, even though I started out in voice. I think it's a great idea. So what you need to do, the first thing you need to do, and here is a PoE switch, um, is get a switch that provides power. And um, I'm trying to look at this. I don't have my glasses on. Um, but right there, it says... PoE uh, switch. So if it doesn't say PoE, it's not a it's not a power over Ethernet. Now the thing you got to watch with these switches is that some switches only a couple ports are PoE and the rest aren't. Other switches have a wattage limit. So you need to look at your your uh, AP site. You need to look at your IP cameras, things like that, to make sure you do not exceed uh, the uh, the wattage of the switch itself. And, um, you know, you can connect all these together into one switch, by the way, and you can program them uh, using VLANs and all that, that separates them, the traffic and all, and it works really great. It's fantastic. Um, and it's pretty secure, too. But the idea is here that uh, you never want to exceed the, the power. Now, I remember once when PoE first came out and we sold, oh, I, I guess we sold 50 uh, Cisco phones uh, to a company. And we sent them a, um, a PoE switch. And they kind of complained that the switch was kind of um, expensive. So we dumbed it down a little bit. We got a little bit, uh, a switch that was a little bit cheaper. We didn't pay attention to the wattage. Didn't know I had to back then. And we were starting to plug the phones in. All of a sudden, we got out there with about 10 or 15 phones. And the, the next phone we plugged in, everything went dead. And it took us a couple hours to figure out that we had exceeded the wattage on the switch. So if you're going to buy a PoE switch, make sure that first of all, you have the ports that you need that are powered. Some switches are powered all through every single port. Others are not. And of course, that the power, the total wattage in the system is not exceeded by your equipment because it will not work. You would have had this equipment plugged in, everything else, it would have been a headache. 
And of course, I always buy managed switches because I like VLANs that protect and separate traffic. And there's a lot of other things you can do with a managed switch, especially when it comes to cybersecurity. So managed switch. This is not a managed switch to my knowledge. I really don't deal much with Netgear, but I don't believe it's a managed switch. But it is a PoE switch. It says it right there. Now, sometimes you only have one uh, product you need to uh, address and, and give power to it. And that would be something like an AP or, or, a, uh, or a camera, an IP camera. And then what you can use is you can use something like this. It's called a PoE injector. And this obviously would go in the back um, where your, your equipment is. And if you actually look at it, it has two ports, one in and one out. And so what happens is, is the data goes in here, then the data comes out here with power. It doesn't go the other way. It just goes in one direction. So what it would look like on the board, it would look like something like this. I'm going to do it in red so you can see it. Um, it comes out of a non-PoE switch, so we're going to take away that PoE. It comes out of a non-PoE switch, goes into the back of the patch panel, then it goes into an injector, and the injector has to be plugged into the wall, so it has to be plugged in, and once it's plugged in, then it goes out to, let's say, the camera. So we'll come out here to the camera, to the IP camera. and. Uh, and that will add power. Now remember the power, if you put it in backwards, it won't work. <laughs> so the data is here, and the data is here, going back and forth. But the power is here on, the, on these injectors. So it will, it's called an injector, it injects the power. So that's a time saver. But at the same time, if you don't have a PoE switch, and you start using these for every single PoE requirement you have, and if you have a lot of PoE requirements, it's going to look really messy back in your phone room. And what's going to happen is it's going to come to a point to where these, uh, you buy so many of these, it's more expensive than just buying a PoE switch. So think of it that way, that you can, uh, you know, it comes a point to where it's better just to have a switch. Uh, by the way, we did solve that problem. Um, I think it was up in uh, Portland. Uh, we're putting the phone system in. We did solve the problem. And the way we solved the problem is we had to get a, a, a switch that had a higher wattage uh, requirement. Let's take a look again at the back of the PoE phone, okay? Uh, this is a great phone, by the way. This is a Meraki Cisco. We sell these, and uh, they are fantastic. And this is a cloud-based system, so I don't have anything sitting in the back besides my, my router and my switch. And my switch, of course, is a PoE switch, but I don't have anything else in the back. I don't have any telephone equipment. So I need to plug this in. Now when I go home and I want to take this with me, let's say I'm going to take two week vacation and I still want to answer the phone because I'm a business owner, you really don't go on vacation. Um, I take this with me. So I plug it into the wall, plug this into it, and then uh, I get my phone and I plug it in, I plug the, you know, the, the, in my internet and it syncs right up with the cloud service and then I have my phone. Now. On the back, which is a really cool idea, you have one port is where the, the, uh, the switch plugs into, of course, through the lines in the building and coming out a RJ45 jack on the wall. And then the other one is you plug in your computer. So this acts as a little switch here. And you know something? It's flawless. It's no problems. Um, while you're talking, you're, you're not going to slow down your data, and when you're um, sending data, you're not going to have problems uh, hearing the person on the other end. It's really been perfected. It really works great. And of course, if you have an installer, the installer should be putting the phone on one VLAN and that other port should be put on um, a data VLAN. So you should have two VLANs coming to this phone. And the phone's smart enough to know that when it does its functions, it's doing it on the phone, the voice VLAN, okay? And when it's passing information, it's only passing information to your computer on the data VLAN. So VLANs are a wonderful thing, and, and maybe what we'll do is in the future, I'll discuss more about VLANs, and, and you can see how great they are and all, and how you shouldn't be scared of them. Some IT guys are scared of them. They just think they mess up their lives, but in reality, they give you a lot of protection, a lot of flexibility, and everything else. It's a great system. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to plug in this PoE um, switch to the phone. Now the phone won't sync because the switch is not connected to the internet. But you'll see after a minute or two that the phone will, will come alive if I have this on. And sometimes it takes a minute or two for the phone to recognize that it has power. And in the screen, there it goes. See it? Meraki, Cisco Meraki. This is a great phone. This is like the coolest phone I've ever had. And it is hardy. I mean, it is, you have a steel case on this thing. But as you can see, uh, it has power, but it doesn't have any uh, data because there's no data plugged into the PoE switch. And so, um, you know, welcome to the future, man. Uh, if you have a, a system that needs, um, uh, you know, that can require PoE, then get the switch. And you know, when you're thinking about switches and routers, now remember, computers probably, laptops, that screen, even though it says connection in error, uh, I can't dial out on that, but that's really a cool screen. I mean, it's touch screen. Really cool. It sounds great, but isn't going to go anywhere because there's no data. It's no place. It's not, not, not plugged into the uh, cloud. So, to make a long story short, uh, I'm going to unplug it. That's the end of the power. Um, if you have a need for PoE, I can't imagine today people aren't using cloud uh, um, and uh, IP phones, VoIP phones, uh, would be silly if you're not. Uh, if they're so simple and they're so easy to install and everything else, they're so reliable and there's no problems with them. There used to be a couple of years ago people had a lot of problems with them. You're not going to have any problems today if you have the switch that supports it. Now, getting back to what I was saying about computers. Computers last a couple of years, you know, four or five years. Man, you're really pushing it for four or five years. Uh, laptops even less. Um, you got to do a refresh every couple of years. But uh, it's different with switches and routers. Invest your money in switches and routers because they tend to hang around like for 10 years. And so you get an old cheap uh, switch and then a cheap router, um, then you're going to have some serious problems. Um, so I always stick with uh, the name brands, uh, Cisco, Juniper, things like that. I prefer, personally, I prefer Cisco, um, but it's pricey. But if you're thinking it's just like a PC that you're going to replace in two years, it's not. And I remember once I went to a building, and they were uh, they needed VLANs, and I and I said, well, it's no problem. They have three floors. They needed some. Uh, each floor needed a uh, uh, access to one VLAN, and and then there was multiple other applications where you could use VLANs. And I went into the phone room, and there was a cheap switch, and I said. You know, the switch is not manageable. It's not a mani you know, it's not a managed switch. It's just an old cheap switch. So you're gonna have to change your three switches, one on each floor, and then we'll set them up into VLANs, things like that, and we'll be able to communicate and and, um, and do the right thing and all. And they said, Well, we don't have money. I said, Well then you're gonna have to run a separate backbone uh, behind uh, and separate small switches to put people in two different networks. Kind of a waste of money, but that's what they went for. Um, the idea is invest in your network by, the, by a serious switch, even if right now you don't have a lot of PoE requirement, uh, P -E -P -O -E requirements, power over Ethernet, buy the power over Ethernet switch and you know, get a decent amount of wattage on it. Get every port that has a power out, full you know, maximum power out. And uh, then at the same time, uh, design it right. Get the good equipment, the router, the switches, the firewall. Uh, don't go cheap on that uh, because they're going to be around for a long time. Uh, again, this is Jim Gibson, and uh, thank you for watching my short little video. I hope it's short, a uh, little video. Uh, cameraman is shaking his head back there. Um, thank you for watching my video. And uh, if, you know, if you're going out for switches, uh, don't go cheap. Hi, this is Jim with CableSupply.com. Hi, this is Jim from CableSupply.com. Hi, this is Jim with CableSupply.com, and today I'm going to show you how to cut a hole in the drywall. This is David, signing out. You stay classy, Internet.